What's up traders? Today we're diving deep into the world of proprietary trading with a special focus on the funding process at Earn to Trade. We'll uncover common mistakes traders make while seeking funding, the psychological benefits of trading with a proprietary firm, and explore the unique aspects of Earn to Trade and the Edge Clear platform that make it stand out in the marketplace. Make sure you stick with us to the end because as many of you know, we will be announcing five lucky winners of the Earn to Trades TCP 50 trading assessments and unravel upcoming features at Earn to Trade and give you an insider's look at the trading platform's transparency. Today's podcast is sponsored by EdgeClear, and Futures Radio Show listeners can now trade at EdgeClear for a low introductory rate of $0.59 cents for most Futures products and $0.20 cents for Micros products and event contracts. Fun with as little as $100 and pair this with Sierra Charts, Teton Order Routing to receive one of the lowest all-in fees in the industry. For new EdgeClear members only, you can check this out at edgeclear.com slash Delhi, that's edgeclear.com slash Delhi. Now we've got the panel in here. We'll start off with two of my good friends. Today's panel includes the founder of EdgeClear and Convergent Trading, Morad Askar. Morad, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thanks. Uh, he's he's also known as Futures Trader 71, as many of you may know if you've been on Twitter for a lot of years. And then we have Earned to Trades head trader, Chris Gray. Chris, first time to the show. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Great to have you. I mean, let's just kick it right off. I mean, everybody's here to learn more about this, what's going on with funding. Funding is probably the hottest topic right now in the trading world. I think we'd agree to that more, Ed, right? You know, uh, it's just, it's crazy how hot it's gotten. And I think for a lot of positive uh, reasons, I, I think that there's a lot, and we're going to discuss those today. But I want to go to you first, Crick, uh, Chris, with understanding the, the funding process at Earn to Trade. Could you tell us about the key requirements for traders? and and what it's what it's look what it looks like to get funded okay so it earned a trade in short for those that don't know we are an evaluation agency you come to us if you think you have what it takes to trade or you want to learn to have what it takes to trade and when you get to that point where you're ready we have a couple different evaluation options that a trader can pursue in order to get funding and when i say funding that's yes that's trading with money that's not their own so it's a it's a win for the trader because they're mitigating their risk and those options that we have or those paths that we can go down our flagship one that we really like to um, share when we're we're talking with people uh, that are just first hearing about us is called the trader career path uh, and it's kind of unique actually in the industry i know there's a lot of uh, other uh, prop firms evaluation firms out there uh, the trader career path is a process by which the traders will test their skills through a series of rule sets, basically a profit target, basically adhering to a, a daily loss limit uh, and trade a minimum of 15 trading days and reach their goals that are set forth based on which account size they choose. But once they pass, if they pass, passing gets them access to an account. Now, this account initially is one size it's one monetary size we have a twenty-five thousand dollar option for the trader career path which means you're trading with an account that's twenty-five thousand, and we also have a fifty thousand dollar account but what makes it very cool is past that point it continues to scale up as the trader continues to scale profitably so their capital for trading continues to grow essentially it doesn't lock a trader into one set point and make them feel like they're kind of stagnating but on the point of stagnating, uh, if you're more comfortable in that regard, if you're and you just want to really get to one set amount, and you're more comfortable in that regard, we have another option called the Gauntlet Mini, which a trader simply picks an account size, uh, a, a capital amount, we'll say, that they're interested in. They then go through a very similar evaluation phase where they prove that they've got the skills and they're responsible enough to be able to handle such large amounts of trading capital, and then beyond that point 
they're given one set amount and it stays at that set amount. So that's the real differentiator between the two. But both of those are the main sets of paths that we offer to get a trader from the uh, from the the completely unfunded side to the funded side of the industry. Thank you so much for that explanation. I see a lot of questions already coming in through the chat. Remember, if you want to ask us questions and you're watching this, you just have to be a subscriber of the channel. And of course, if you enjoy this conversation throughout today, hit that like button. Morad, I want to bring you back into this. So Morad, I want to talk about the relationship with Earn to Trade and Edge Clear. You know, I've known you for a lot of years. You've backed a lot of traders. And now you guys have this partnership we'll call it with earn to trade explain to us what that is and tell us about how working with edge clear and earn to trade how this is separating you guys from the pack in this industry yeah so uh we've we've known about earn to trade uh for some time earn to trade handles the trial portion so the paper trading account or the simulator account and all that stuff is actually handled by earn the trade. Once a trader passes and they're going to be funded live, they come to edge clear so that, so that um, an entity under earn to trade, it opens up an account with edge clear funds it with actual dollars. So I can confirm that you know, uh, traders from Earn to Trade are actually getting backed live because we see that side, right? That's the key uh, to this whole thing. It's not a continuous simulator type of account, which I know some other funding companies might do. Earn to Trade does it the kind of the original way. Earn to Trade's been around since the very beginning of this uh, funding trader program uh, kind of offering to our industry. We open the account, it's funded, and then the trader trades it just like a prop account like you and I would know about, you know? And that's all handed through, uh, handled through EdgeClear, uh, and it's done on, you know, on, on a, a, the rhythmic feed um, and with very clear risk controls. And that's the part that we bring is that we make it so that it's very clear what the parameters are the uh, the guys from earn to trade have set those for the different account sizes and we're simply you know there's an assigned personal broker to those traders and the, that person is monitoring how those traders are doing and making sure that they're getting you know they're hitting the risk limits and that they're not taking excessive risk and things like that so that's the side of this that uh, that edge clear brings to the table love it and, and it's great to see two people that I really like and respect working together with this. And I've read a lot about earn to trade and, and you can see a lot of the comments in here. People are saying how much they like it. And I want to get into the, the little nitty uh, nitty gritty with you, Chris. I mean, now that we understand the process, we, we know the relationship with edge clear and earn to trade. Let's talk about this earn to trade side. You're the head trader there. Let's talk about the common mistakes. What are the, some, what are some of the pitfalls I would say that traders often stumble upon when trying to secure funding? And what can you tell them to help hopefully avoid some of them? So very, very loaded question, of course, but we lost Chris for a moment there, Morad, while we try to get him back. Um, let's go with you to that question. This is the beauty of doing live, everybody. <laughs> Morad, you know, Morad, you and I, we have we've been around long enough to, you know, we go back to the days of, you know the old school kind of prop firms, right? <laughs> Very different than everyone calls this prop, but it is a, it is a different from what you and I are used to. Um, but you've back traders, you've seen this, you've been down this road, you've built convergent trading. What are some of the pitfalls and you know, some of these mistakes that's, that traders struggle with and help them uh, with some, some of your advice to, to avoid these issues? So the main thing I see is, you know, the risk parameters for these programs are very uh, strict. You know, the ability to, um, you know, the, the, the down limit versus how much you can earn, uh, the trailing stops, all that, all that stuff uh, makes it so that these sorts of programs are really emphasizing risk control. You and I know that 
without risk management, you're gambling. You know how family members say, well, you're a trader, you're a gambler. Not really, because we're trading with an edge. Um, and the only, the line that gets crossed between a trader and a gambler, somebody who's coming in and just swinging for the fences. To me, having run a prop shop, having backed people, and the way I did it was very traditional. It's something that you and I have probably seen in the past where you interview people, you qualify them, then you hire them as employees, and then you put them through the, the process of, uh, of uh, starting to make money, and then there's a payout, uh, there's some sort of a payout scheme or scale, and uh, and then you know you pay them out, and they, it's it's like a three-year contract. These programs don't work like that. These programs, you pass the evaluation, you go into live, and then if you uh, hit the risk parameters and and kind of blow out the account, you have the opportunity to try again to earn the right to trade that live account where where money's real money's exchanged, where you can actually earn a payout. That's the difference. We have Chris with us here. He can probably answer that better. Absolutely, and I appreciate you taking that. And uh, full disclosure, we are currently experiencing a true, uh, true and blue Florida storm here. So, uh, if I lose power again, I've got my battery backup. But uh, just so you guys know, I, I'd, I'd love to be here. Uh, and worst case scenario, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get in on the phone. But anyway, so answering the question, the most common ways that people uh, avert their um, path to receiving that golden goose that golden egg at the end of the at the end of the line that people like to you know make it seem as it is there's a few simple ways that they do that and the main one is of is not adhering to the rule set that whatever whatever evaluation agency that they're at all of them have a rule set so at earned a trade i'll speak based on us with us we need to see someone trade at least 15 trading days. That's one thing. If they don't do that, they trade 14 trading days. That's one way that they're going to cancel their path to funding. If they don't trade during the approved times, which is a, just a fancy way of simply saying only trading during open exchange hours for whatever asset you're trading. So it's a pretty easy one to adhere to. But if you open a contract or something along those lines after hours, that's against the rules. And that could avert your avert your, your destiny of reaching all of the, the the, the trading capital that you wish to attain. We also have a progression ladder, which simply is making sure that the position sizing during the evaluation phase is adhering to some degree of logic. That's, that's the blunt way that I'm going to put that. It's making sure that you're not massively exceeding any type of generally accepted, intelligent risk management control with your position sizing in relation to your account. So we have trading the minimum number of uh, days, which in most cases at, at our place is, is, is 15. We have the approved times at which we want to have contracts open or flat if we're you know going after hours. We have the progression ladder, which adheres to the number of contracts that someone could open. We have a daily loss limit, which once again, this is something that most people are familiar with, but in short, it's a maximum amount of money that a trader can lose. And all of these things are very applicable when you think about it to just regular trading, whether your trade, your goal is to become a funded trader or not. Most traders should, uh, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion, have some type of oh no button where they're willing to risk no more on the day. All of us lose as traders. And if anyone tells you different, they're full of you insert the adjectives yeah, but or pronouns. But as far as that goes, these are things that are just very, very good to adhere to as traders. Uh, and once again, my subjective opinion, but those things that are good for us that generally are indicative of a trader that's solo trading succeeding are a lot of what make up our rules because at the end of the day, we are an evaluation agency and it's our job to make sure that you're not just a lottery card write-off that simply just came in, threw it all on black, and walked away with you know a four hundred thousand dollar account. If you had, uh, if if you're, it was your job to, you know, as a, you know, I'm speaking obviously to the general audience, but if it was your job to make sure that you weren't unnecessarily risking a prop firm's money that you were looking to connect somebody with, you would want to know that 
they're capable of repeating their successes. They're capable of cutting it when the time comes to cut it. They're capable of maintaining some degree of trading consistency. Um, so a lot of these things are really not, uh, they're, they're very transparent um, as far as, or not transparent, really, I should say self-explanatory or applicable to just regular trading and um, just as a solo trader or a funded trader or what have you. Um, but I think that the reason so many people nowadays are so excited to see people like us, people making it possible to become a professional trader that's trading with someone else's money is because the markets are more volatile than ever. And one of the biggest pitfalls of traders comes through their emotions. So everybody knows that fear and greed can absolutely cloud a trader's judgment. It leads to irrational decisions. Uh, when you're trading with someone else's capital, even though all of us, you know, are, 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 are of course, we're kind-hearted individuals, we love our neighbors, and, and we're supposed to care about them as much as we care about ourselves. But I can tell you that in the trading world, traders are less psychologically impacted by their decisions when they're trading with someone else's money. So, you know, maybe we don't love our neighbors as much as we think so. But at the end of the day, we use that psychology to our advantage. Um, and as traders and having access to trading with someone else's money is is one of the ways that we can avoid one of the main pitfalls that becomes an aspiring trader. Um, but uh, hopefully I didn't go off too much on a tangent there. No, I love it. And we're going to build on that. I mean, a couple of things. I talked about at the beginning, I said, this is one of the hottest topics, if not really the hottest topic right now is getting funded in, uh, in being able to trade. And I said, I was going to talk about some of the benefits. And to me, that this is such a massive benefit. And what I love about these programs is even if you don't get funded, which obviously we hope you do, but it builds structure, you're learning about the market, uh, in ways that, you know, you, I would say, you can learn them on your own, but with somebody implementing a structure, something you have to be held to, somebody holding you accountable. And I know that in my days when I had my mentors looking over my shoulder a lot, it's when I was more, I was better with my rules, just better about the intangibles of being a trader, right? Actually becoming a trader, not just, just finding a strategy that you like. And I think that that's so important about this because it does build that structure. It builds good habits. Uh, I think is, is a good way to put it. And I want to go to you more, right? I want to build on the psychology of things. You've been through this. We've talked about it. Shed some light on the psychological benefits trader enjoy by being funded. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get ahead of this question maybe, but why get funded? To me, the biggest, some of the biggest pieces that are missing for traders and the reason I ran a prop shop and the way I have seen it over the last 15 years or so being public as a professional trader is, you know, it's the accountability piece is, a, is, has been a problem for most traders. You know, if you're not accountable, you're swinging for the fences, you know, you're down on the day, you still have $2,000 in your account. And you're like, screw it. I'm just going to blow this $2,000 by just adding, adding, adding and until my broker kind of takes me out. So the accountability piece kind of uh, is missing for traders because each individual trader tends to live in isolation in, in my experience. So that's a big thing that this brings. You know somebody's watching, right? Because you have to pass the trial in order to get funded. The second piece is your most folks know risk management's important, but they don't have any rules. In general, if you speak to, to people, especially individual traders, independent individual traders, generally there are no rules. The rule is I have $500 margins and I'm going to lever up to the $500 on an e-mini, you know? Uh, and, and what this is doing is it's taking care of, in my opinion, it's taking care of two really important pieces. The third piece, which, you know, again, if I'm getting ahead of you here, let me know, why would you go to a combine? You know, if you have $5,000 and you want to trade micros, why would you go not to a combine? I'm sorry, to a, to a TCP or a gauntlet. Uh, why would you do that versus trading your $5,000 and taking 100% loss or earning 100% profit? The reason is because you don't have accountability and you don't have 
uh, the risk management in place, you might show up in one day and below that $5,000. With a gauntlet or a TCP, you're risking you're risking the amount you paid for that uh, trial. That's it. And you can't go beyond that. And it's on SIM and it's it's over. You have to actually go and, and repurchase the next uh, trial to be able to participate. So for people who are coming from somewhere or are new to trading or haven't figured out that piece, the trial is really a much better way to go. Um, and, and the fact that, you know, if you do this correctly, you get to trade someone else's money and get an 80% payout or whatever is, is all the better. You, you know, the $5,000 can go a long way to trials versus, you know, I'm, I'm fading a trend day and I just blew half of my account. And now I have all these emotional and psychological problems as a result. This is the main asset that I think uh, funded trader programs brings to to the table for traders. No, I, now, I want to go back to you, Chris. Of course, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm eager, chopping at the bits, ready to jump in with one more thing that I wanted to add. Or that was that was a great. Uh, I mean, that was just a great way to talk about it in general, Morad. But the the big thing that you may be maybe I maybe you heard it or said it and I didn't hear it, but. The fact that money makes money, that's a huge, huge portion of why you might be more willing or not more willing, more why you would want to trade with someone else's money because the amount of that money is such a larger amount than your $5,000 in this hypothetical example. And everything is a factor of the account size. We all know that everything is a factor of account size. It's, it's, it's incredibly hard. We literally call it a challenge when somebody does something like take a $500 account to $10,000 or something along those lines. They call it a challenge for a reason because it's not easy to do it's not easy by any means to do um so having a larger account size while it's not going to solve or turn a bad trader into a good trader it's definitely going to lower that uh threshold at which point someone breaks through into being a profitable trader per se um but uh, so account size is extremely uh, appealing re or an extremely appealing reason for why someone might uh, be interested in trading uh, with someone else's money, especially when it exceeds the amount of money that they have on their own. But of course, losing all of your own money is never fun. You know, that's not who who, lo who likes doing that. I'm sure every single one of us have done it at some point or another and decided that it's not something we w always want to continue doing. But hey. I, I always look at it like this when I look at traders getting funded. Just because you have money, just because you have a good strategy does not mean that you're a trader. There's intangibles. There's you need to practice. Everyone talks about good risk management, but until you're actually going and doing it and building those good habits, you're never going to be a successful trader. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how good your strategy is, because at some point you're going to be making these psychological mistakes. We all have been through it, you know, and I think this is a great way to provide that structure. I want to actually go on a little bit um, and talk about something a little bit more about inside with earn to trade, uh, monitoring the trader's progress. What metrics are you guys using? So the metrics that we're using really is the rule set, essentially, that... Oh. Sorry, I didn't want to blow your ears out. I had to clear my throat there. So the metrics that we're using is the rule set that we mentioned. The, uh, you know, the the approved times, the progression ladder, the daily loss limit. Those are by which the ways that we're going to determine whether or not you pass through to the promised land or you get sent back to the beginning. And, and you know, do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars. The way that we are measuring this, all of it is completely transparent. I mean, if you head over to the site, it's and click on right off the main page if you click on the gauntlet mini or or the trader career path and scroll down immediately there's there's a, a little box that shows exactly what the rule set is we one of the things that we pride ourselves with at earn trade is being uh the most transparent and 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 maybe i'm well of course i'm biased i'm i'm proud to work at under trade i'm proud to be a part of something that does what we do that's a win-win for both the trader and the you just it's just a it's a just a generally good symbiotic relationship that we have with the trading community but one of the things that i am frustrated with with our industry is the fact that there's just so much 
Um, there's so much enigma that surrounds certain companies. I'm not going to say any specific companies, but there's a lot of, it's really important that a trader is able to see through things and know exactly what parameters and what metrics are going to be used when they go through their evaluation phase. And what I'm more or less getting at is all firms are not, all, all evaluation firms are not created equal. And, and some of them almost feel like some of the rules that they employ are meant to kind of just catch people uh, in not any really beneficial way, but just more so to just send them back to the end of the line and, and, and maybe collect an exam fee. I, I, so I, one of the things that I like about Erda Trade is where everything that we do is, is, is completely transparent. Those metrics are completely visible before you get started. There's no surprises. Um, and we pride ourselves in, in, in not lying about a darn thing. And that makes us have a very easy time at night when we go to sleep. And it, and it, and it's something that I'm actually proud to be a part of. But. That's awesome. And, and I've known Morad for so many years and I trust him as much as anybody in this industry. Yeah, he's at the top of my list because we've had such a great relationship. When he told me about you guys, you know, I thought that, you know, we have to, I want I want to stay with you just for another second though, Chris, because once the traders check all these boxes, how long does it take to get funded? So once you get funded, you're given an option or, well, I'm sorry, not once you get funded. I apologize. Once you pass and check all the boxes, you're given a choice. You can go the live sim route where you can still earn actual capital, but you're trading on a live sim environment. Uh, or you can go just the live funded account where you're, you know, this is where Mora excels in explaining this. He kind of touched on it briefly where your orders are actually going, you know, to the CME, so to speak. We have, those two options, when basically it's all going to be under a five business day window, but it's shorter with the live sim route because there's less uh, hoops that need to be jumped through. So uh, we'll say three days for those that choose the live sim route, and we have five days, we'll say sub five days, no longer for the uh, the live account route. So very quickly. That's fantastic. Um uh, We'll go back to you, Morad. Let, let's talk about, I think we go back to how this kind of works because i mean obviously we're getting a ton of questions here everybody and i should actually take a quick moment and say look at we're going to be announcing the winners here um i'm going to announce them in the next five to ten minutes i'm going to announce the winners uh which is awesome we've got five winners today which is fantastic they're going to be able to go in uh and get their assessment and i also will say that we are going to leave time at the end because we have got a ton of questions in chat uh and we will get to them I will try to get to as many as possible. So I want to let everyone know to be patient. We are going to be announcing the winner soon, and I will get to your questions. Back to you, Morad. Talk to us uh, about the enhancements, these these great things that we that the traders have by this relationship. I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but now that we're kind of understanding more about this process, when you're on the Edge Clear platform. What are the things that you're helping these traders? What are some of the maybe edges we can can talk about um, on the technical side or platform side uh, that this relationship helps these traders potentially get funded? Yeah, so the most important one is the speed with which we can open an, a live account if they choose the live route. Uh, the That process is quite uh, streamlined at this point. We have a dedicated broker for it who, who understands it. The other piece is the the tech itself. The tech is uh, it's not web based. It's it's something you it's a piece of software that you download for Windows. It's a Windows, Linux, Mac um, compatible, and it's a direct market access connection through Rhythmic. So you're getting really fast data, direct data. Um, we we just like with every uh, piece of technology, there are glitches and technical issues here and there. But in general, it's the data feed that I look at every day. It's a full depth, it's what's called a full depth MBO feed, uh, which means you're seeing every change in price uh, that's occurring all the way up and down the ladder. And, and so, you know, the, the tech itself, is is an important piece the other piece is the the risk control within the tech there are we can create all kinds of risk rules uh to help traders stay within the boundaries of a live account 
Uh, the sim side, the uh, the trial side is handled by Earn to Trade. We look at the live side, and Earn to Trade sends a lot of lot you know a lot of people past these uh, trials, and and we get to we get to put them on. So we know that uh, the comfort level we have with Earn to Trade is we get to see that they're actually backing people with live money. You know that there are people who are getting payouts and things like that. So that's that's the edge that we have. Uh, but the main pieces are the tech, the speed of the tech, and the, the risk control uh, offering that we have, and the fact that each person within uh, a funded account from earn a trade has a direct broker that they can uh, deal with uh, if anything happens with the account. I love it. We touched on the psychological side. We touched on the technical side. Uh, it's it's really great to see that we're using the technology in the world today to help traders become successful because we always talk about all these traders that don't make it and it, and we go back to the reason is that it doesn't matter how much money they have or how good their strategy is they don't put they don't have the right structure they don't have a broker to talk to i go back to the beginning days for me how important that was um, my, my buddy Frank Madden, Anthony Alessio, shout out to you guys. And I know that I know I drove you guys crazy, but you guys helped me so much. Um, Chris, I'm going to go back to you. You're the head trader. This is going to be the last question before we announce the five winners. Because we've talked about all the things we've talked about, the psychology of it, we've talked about the process and all these things. How much uh, we didn't talk about the technical side, the actual strategic side that what these traders are coming in and trading. Maybe talk a little bit about what you're seeing as a common strategy and is earn to trade doing anything to help these traders with some of the basics of technical analysis? 100% great question. So a big focus, and I know that some of my colleagues are going to be probably squirming in their seats because I haven't mentioned anything about this at all. And this is basically what we built earn to trade around is the educational side of things. We're not just an evaluation agency while all of that is, you know, appealing and nice as well, but really what we are and why I, me personally am a part of it is because I gain the, we'll call it spiritual fulfillment because I feel rewarded when I feel like I have helped others. I personally am involved with helping our traders. Uh, maybe they need help understanding RSI, who knows? It could be a variety of different technical analysis subjects, but we have a library of pre-recorded content that I have quite literally recorded hundreds, if not thousands of hours covering various subjects. Um, that is intentionally put there at the finger to be accessed by the traders uh, to give them the highest possible chance of passing. We've always tried to reach for the highest pass rate in the industry because I don't know, it's a pretty cool thing to, to, to a feather in the cap. It's something that you can feel good about. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of reasons to do everything. You can find a good reason to do something. You can find a bad reason to do something. These are the reasons that kind of, push us to do things is that that kind of we all seem to be similar minded at earn trade where we like the feeling of taking part in someone else's journey you know it I, whatever it is it's i've done a lot of things in my life i've been in the markets for well beyond 15 years at this point um and when a lot of a lot of people will say you know why why do this you know why why would you be involved with this if you're financially successful in, in in this way or what have you because anyone that's done it long enough and actually becomes successful will be able to attest to this there comes a point where you're like what is there something more is there something else i could be doing is there something else that you know 10 20 50 you know 30 years from now when i'm laying on my 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 hopefully you know down comforter deathbed there's is there is, is have i done a variety of things that make me feel happy about the person I am. It, to me, it's not all about money. And to all of us at Earn to Trade, essentially, uh, you know, it's not about just the money, but it's about the process. So we put a lot of emphasis on making sure traders are aware that trading isn't a get rich quick scheme. And we'll be the first to you know, slap you in the face with that cold reality and say, listen, this trading style that you're employing perhaps is not going to get you very far. Sorry, buddy. It's you know, maybe trading, if this is the type of trading you want to do, maybe Maybe it's not for you because statistically it doesn't fit the mold of those that are successful. Um, and I feel also reward in those scenarios for preventing someone from blowing up so much of their 
capital that then becomes the next person to fly a plane into the IRS building. You know, I want I want to make sure that traders know the truth that it is hard. It does take work. It takes education and it takes study. And that's why we provide a lot of study and a lot of help with technical analysis and a lot of cold, harsh reality uh, that comes in the form of tough love. Uh, and that's if you want to do it, this is how those are doing it type mentality. Maura, we're going to end with you before we go to announce the winners on really the same type of question because you've got so much experience training traders over the years. I just want you to share a few words of wisdom with the traders out there when it comes to building a strategy, getting a strategy before they get funded. Talk to them about some of the things, maybe some boxes they should check when it comes to building their strategy before they step into the arena, we'll call it, and go through their assessment. Yeah, so um, it doesn't matter what you do, what tool you use. You might decide that a certain tool is better than another. And I feel like a lot of focus goes there, indicators and stuff. But at the end of the day, you have to have an edge. You have to have a reason. And the question we have to answer as traders is quite simple. What, what happens when I do what I do in the market that compels the market to pay me. So if I click to buy right here, what is the thing that is compelling the market to pay me for having taken that action? Most traders cannot answer that uh, because they're relying on something that is random. So the key thing to take away to develop an edge and, and for these types of programs, you know, the earn the trade program, the smaller the time frame you use, the better because you want to create as many uh, samples or touch points with the market on very small risk uh, with, with reasonable reward to slowly build up that account. What you don't want to do is think, well, you know, I'm getting this combine for uh, this uh, gauntlet for sale. So I'm just going to swing for the fences because you're going to break the rules. Nobody wants to back a person who got lucky because you have to go open an account, fund it, and pay data, you know, CME data fees or whatever. And then they come in and they made, they made it in on this huge trade that, ha you know, they happen to catch a rally and it just goes off and, and, and all that. But that's not an edge. You have to have something that you can measure. And the way you measure it is you go do it. Then you check to see that you did what you're supposed to do. And then you're setting goals as you go along. And with this TCP program, you get to transition between account sizes as you progress. You're not forced to go and pay for a higher gauntlet to get a bigger uh, live account. So this is a big edge that earn to trade offers versus its competitors. But the biggest thing I would say for traders is if you are... If you show up and you're going to you're going to say I'm going to look for a trade or I'm I'm just checking my charts for trades you're not going to make it. It should be very clear. Like I saw someone in the chat comment about having an issue with overtrading and not accepting losses. If you're overtrading and not accepting losses, your issue is you don't have a plan because you can't overtrade if there if you have a plan because you're only trading as much as you're supposed to. And if you can't control your losses, it's because you have your PL on the screen and you're trading that versus whatever the market is doing. So it's key to, to kind of define, even on a very kind of, you know, take a take a a, a, a post-it this small and write three things on it. That's better than 99% of what people are doing. Like I'm gonna look for this and I'm gonna trade at this time and I'm gonna look for this setup, and that's it. And then measure how that's performing. Um, and just repeat and refine and repeat. And this process takes a long time. Uh, that's what I would say. Don't just because you bought a gauntlet for sale doesn't mean you should just come in here and just click away because there's no unless that's what you want to do. And that's your hobby. Uh, instead of gaming, it's not a good way to do this. It's a waste of time. That's brilliant. And I know, Anthony, I, I, I know that we're, we're, we're diving in. But afterwards, I would I have 10 things that fit perfectly in with what Morad was saying that I would like to add as far as like 
applicable to just traders in general, call it a, a goodwill peace offering. These are things that just are good fundamentals that I feel should be mentioned in conjunction with what he's saying. It doesn't even have anything to do with uh, earn a trade or what have you. It's just good psychological stuff, but take it away. Oh, perfect. And I would love for you when we're done, share those with us. And we give a chart deck following each and every show. It's free. It's on my website. You go there and download it. And we'll put Chris's 10 things that he mentioned. So just email them to us. We'll put them in a chart deck for you guys. It gives you guys all the links and everything that we discussed today uh, in the show. Just kind of a wrapped up summary for everybody. So you leave with something. Now, are we ready for the winners? Um, I'm about to announce them. We've got five earned a trades. Uh, Five winners for Earn to Trades TCP 50 trading assessments. Before I announce these five winners, Chris, I'd just love for you to just tell everybody what, what exactly it is that they won. So everybody that is, you know, becoming a, a, a lucky Earn to Trader, we'll call them at this point, we are giving away five TCP accounts. So the TCP that we've been talking about uh, in explaining the, 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 the evaluation opportunity is what we're giving away. So it's the evaluation opportunity for the TCP, which is the trader career path. Uh, if you want to check it out, anybody that's watching right now, just head over to earn a trade and, and just click the trader career path right there on the main site um, if you want to follow along. But uh, that's it's a pretty awesome opportunity. It's an opportunity to get funded and to continue to get more and more and more and more funded as you continue to progress. And anybody that's once again, anybody that is in this for the long term, that's actually in this seriously, uh, should have no issue with doing that uh, or really uh, with with the if, if you're if you're successful and you're truly successful you should have no issue continuing to be successful with that shouldn't scare you you should view it as a challenge and an opportunity to continue to prove yourself got it all right well that's awesome i'm so excited for these five winners and without further ado the five winners are and they were drawn randomly and hopefully you guys put the time in you know we do this raffle press which is really cool so if you're uh, put something out on Twitter or Instagram and increase your odds and your chances to win. And let's see who the winners are. So the winners are Fernando Cortez, Abba Rowe, Steve Brown, Sufian, and El Morbit Muhammad. If I got any of your names wrong, what can I say? I, I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> with getting people's names, but I got to tell you, I'm so happy for you guys. Um, it says four and four, but there's actually five winners. Sorry about that. But well, let's see if they're in chat. And what we're going to be doing now is, so a couple things. How does this all work? Number one, you five winners are going to be sent to Earn to Trade. Earn to Trade will contact you, and they will help you guys get set up. Um, if you don't claim this prize within, uh, I think on our rules, I'd have to say exactly how long it is, whatever that time frame is we will randomly pick other people to take your place. So make sure you check your emails, you check your spam. Within the next week, you will be notified by earn to trade And like I said, if you don't take it, of course, we're going to award winner to somebody else. And so I'm so excited for you guys. And I think it's just, you know, more ad. And we go to you and Chris again. I just take a moment to these traders. And once again, they're going to get their assessment now. I mean, just I'd love for you guys just to give like a quick 15, 30 second answer and say what their mindset should be before they go in and start clicking buttons. What's that mindset? Maybe you start with you, Chris. All right. So here it comes. So number one, more I'd already hit on this uh, briefly. He, he said, uh, if you're doing this, you don't have a plan. That means have a plan, have a trading plan. This is not negotiable. This is not something there, there's no intelligent argument as for why you can't plan out what parameters you're looking for and why you choose to react the way you do. If you can't, you don't have a plan, you're never going to make it. You're never going to make it to number two, where you're going to have the opportunity to even be emotional and uh, emotional. So emotional trading is a very common downfall. We briefly touched on it. Try to control your emotions. If you feel that you're getting emotional, step away from the computer, go for a run, go for a swim, go pet your dog. I don't know, go dress up your cat, whatever it is that makes you happy and get out of the funk that you're in, go do it. Don't continue to trade when you're in an emotionally compromised state. And it's very easy to get there. And in, in the more adept you are at getting in tune with your emotions, the quicker you'll be able to assess when you're emotionally compromised. The third thing that I always see traders do is the overtrading. Overtrading is simply becoming addicted to the excitement of winning and you're doing well, you've had a successful day 
and you don't know when to call it because you just want more and more and more and more and more. If you ever begin to feel like that, it's okay to feel that way. But if you ever let that feeling control you, that's not okay. Um, also ignoring risk management. If you don't have some type of risk management in set, you're destined to explode in the most Wall Street bet style way, we'll say, uh, chasing losses. So a lot of traders, when they lose, they'll do things like Martingale. Martingale, if you don't know what it is, it's it's basically multiplying your amounts in an order to when you finally win to recoup all the previous losses. It is a mathematically flawed system. It uh, doesn't mean that it can't be done correctly. I'm not going to get into that, nor am I going to provide that kind of trading advice. But chasing losses, bad for you. This is well documented. We also have lack of patience. Trading is a very patient game. There's days where I have gone the entire day and decided I'm not trading anything. I didn't like the way anything looked and nothing hit in the way that I had prepared in my trading plan per se. There's in my scenario doesn't come up. My setup doesn't come up. I'm not going to make one. I can't make one because doing that is stepping out of the trading plan. So patience, discipline kind of falls in the same category. Don't need to harp on that too much. Discipline is absolutely imperative as a trader. It's, you know, that, that mental armor and then overconfidence. For some reason, a lot of us as traders are some arrogant individuals. And, and the quicker we learn to accept that and that we're not the best, we kind of put our ego in check, the better off we will be. It's very easy to have a short streak. This is really common with new traders where they, have some success, they do well for a week, two weeks, maybe even a month, but it's still all re in all relativity, a very small sample size. It's a very small amount of data that we're, we're, we're doing well in, and there's no guarantee of future performance based on that. So don't get overconfident, stay humble. Everything you do should be should be addressable before you do it. And you should then review it after you do it and continue to do so. Continue to monitor the data, continue to, to adjust where needed and continue to do the things that work. But there we go. All on you, Morad. Morad, yeah. I mean, just some thoughts with the traders that won here and obviously other traders that are sticking in here. We're going to be getting to your questions as well. So we didn't forget about that. But, you know, these winners, Day one, what's the mindset going in day one before they start clicking buttons? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think Chris covered most of it. One thing to remember about uh, this uh, trader career path, which is a TCP, they call it the TCP program, is you don't need to use a trade copier. You don't need to complicate things. As, as uh, you pass a test and you progress, you can trade up to a $400,000 uh, 400, uh, live account. And, and so try not to complicate things. It is very easy. Uh, there's a belief that the more complex I, uh, I do things, uh, the more opportunity I have to, um, to win. It's actually the opposite. The simpler we can keep things, the more likely it is that we can follow it, the more likely it is that we, we can recognize a setup and trade it. Look, you won a free TCP that's that starts at 50K. What you have to do now is create a short time frame plan, not scalping, so to, so to speak, but you have to be active uh, for those 15 days and meet the other requirements. So make it so that every trade has a multiple uh, return per unit of risk. In other words, if you're a trader who's risking, you know, one point to gain one point, the probabilities are probably not on your side. If you go to 1.5 points per point or better, called a risk factor. So if you use a 1.5 risk factor or two or something like that, you can pay for those losses pretty well. So your plan needs to be around something that the market is doing that you can easily recognize and respond to. But your plan should also pay you well for every unit of risk that you take. You know, I'm not going to come in here and risk five points to make a point. I'm not going to make it very far. So keep it to a short time frame. Don't, you know, don't expect to be a swing trader in one of these, uh, one of these trials. It doesn't work very well. Um, keep it tight, you know, keep the risk tight and, and look, look to let things run. Overtrading is going to be your, your worst enemy. 
And overtrading is a as a psychological, it's an emotional issue. It combines poor a poor plan, lack of belief in that plan, lack of confidence, impatience, and attachment to money all combined into one piece. Uh, and so you need to plan for that. That's your biggest uh, nemesis. And you need to kind of know that, hey, be able to recognize that, oh, I'm starting to find trades when there are no trades in front of me. So I'm going to step away, like Chris said. This is knowing yourself. I know these are cliches, but they're true. Knowing yourself is one of the key pieces uh, to this puzzle. You have to be able to pull back and and uh, stick to your plan and be patient. Some days just don't yield any opportunities. I love it. Uh, guys, this has been so great. What we're going to do is we're going to go to some of the questions that we have uh, here from the audience. Once again, great, congratulations to the winners. You will be reached out to by Earn to Trade uh, in the coming week. It's 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 really, this is so much fun. And, you know, one some of the comments I'm seeing in here, I mean, obviously we got a ton of comments today, which is awesome. I love when you guys participate uh, in the chat. Uh, and some people are like, pick more winners. And let's look at more ad. Chris and I aren't going anywhere. Uh, we might continue to do these. Uh, this was such a great show. So hang tight and look for possibilities of, of more of these in the future. So uh, if you didn't win today, and we actually, I, I think what we should do is even some follow-up, seeing how some of these traders did and getting some of these traders from the audience in here. And maybe we talk with them a little bit. I think that could be pretty cool, you know? So I know I'm kind of throwing this on these guys right now, but I'm, as I'm thinking, I, I love this stuff and I love talking with traders. A couple questions that we have. Some of them are really technical, right to earn a trade. Some of them are more about trading. Uh, these are the ones I've started out for today. Um, the first one is, I, I like this question for both of you, kind of an easy one. Why use a trailing stop loss? We'll start with you, Chris. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah. Nope. Let me see if I can unmute him. All right. Good. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. They've been plagued by these power issues. Uh, so as far as the trailing stop goes, how far back should we should we analyze this question? Because this is a this is a deep one. Uh, so uh, the simple answer be behind why use a trailing stop is because you're trying to limit your losses while protecting your gains. That's the simple answer. I mean, Morad, talk about these challenges. You talk about keeping it tight and doing all this. I mean, I'm not familiar. I've never done one of these challenges. And so I'm assuming that this trader is either, you know, someone who's done them or tried them. And then I guess they're asking a question like, why would you use, or, you know, why would you use a trailing stop loss? Well, if they're defining a trailing stop loss as a, as, a, as a stop loss that follows the trade along with the market, and they're not using a trailing stop loss as some of these programs have, where the more money you make, the tighter oh. the, the loss is before you're, you're pushed out of the program. Got it. Uh, but the trailing stop loss, as soon, you know, the goal with the trailing stop loss is to allow winners to run. Here's the problem. The market doesn't trend as often as it sits sideways or balances. You look at yesterday, the day before, the day before that, it, we haven't really trended since thir last Thursday. So a trailing stop loss, for me personally, my recommendation if I was your coach is to say, you know, work a scaling plan. In other words, avoid trading one contract at a time because it's really hard to trail or do anything with one contract. Trade to scale out, bank your risk, meaning take a scale out where your stop would be so that your risk is off the table and then let that other contract run uh, in the hopes that you're, you've caught a trend. But the, you know, you have to identify when the market's more likely to trend and when it isn't. For me personally, you know, I, I look for scale outs and then I look for that runner and, and I try to keep it so that if the runner keeps running, great. If it doesn't, it's okay. I'm okay emotionally with that trading stop getting triggered. 
So next, I just want to go to the next question. I mean, unless you want to add to something there, Chris, I don't want to ever. I, I really like what Morad said. I'm a big believer in essentially splitting things into, I like to call them thirds, even if it's not literally thirds, where you're not initially entering the position with the full amount that you're intending to eventually invest into the position in the best case scenario. I think adding to winning positions can be a great idea. And I think getting out with a take profit goal and allowing something to continue to gold mine for you that won't corrupt with a tight trailing stop sure and then in the other capacity of you know what morad was talking about i think a lot of times is more often referred to like a trailing drawdown really but people confuse those two all the time not saying morad did obviously i'm saying uh, just people out there in the world did he did a great job of explaining exactly what that is but but yeah yeah okay so a lot of these questions are things we've covered so i'm not going to get to them but i think some of these questions are you know you from robert frank he's asking can you trade the e-minis during the London session? Or is it only during the day? So can you trade at night? Uh, now, is that a question for, for, for me just to clarify? Yeah, for earn to trade. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I think he knows that you can trade them, but I think he's asking, do you only can you only trade during regular session hours? Or, can Correct. You, or is this around the 24 hours? No, so you can only trade when the exchange of which the asset you're trading is open. So technically, there are different uh, time blocks that you can trade. It is generally most of the time, but only when the exchange is open. So that's a that's that, that's a question that to answer subjectively, you're going to have to just make sure you're aware of your exchanges hours, which we have all of it listed on the website as well. Um, and this question, I, I, maybe I just don't understand. Is it possible to keep your profit in the wallet and upgrade it to have a safety net? I don't know what they mean by that. I think, I think I know what they're saying. They're, they're, I think they're referencing actually what we were just touching on the trailing drawdown. I think they're referencing, is it because the traditional method with things like uh, a normal evaluation that which we at Earn to Trade call the gauntlet, uh, when you withdraw from your account, you technically are bringing your padding to potentially hitting like a failure line a little bit closer if you're taking you know some of that cushion away. I think that's what they're referencing. Um, the trader career path actually solves that problem. You know, the, the, awesome. you continue moving up and you maintain that cushion, but you have the option to do either or. Uh, do we need to pay a performance fee in earn to trade? Another question. I don't know. I don't know what do they mean by a performance fee? I, I, I don't know. Wondering. What are the payouts? Maybe is that, is that maybe that's what they're asking? Like how much do they keep? I, I don't know. So the way our process works, remember at Earn to Trade, we are an evaluation firm that connects them with the funding. So we are connecting them with the prop firm itself. And on our side of things, we are simply a firm that's taking monetary compensation in the form of our evaluation fee. And it's a relatively very low number to begin with. Um, but in the scheme to answer that question as how the arrangement works with a, being a funded trader, once you've actually passed through the gate, you're in a scenario where it's an 80-20 profit split. That means you say you take the four hundred thousand, well, hundred thousand dollar account just to make it to make it even. Uh, if if you make a thousand dollars in profit, you get to withdraw eight hundred dollars, and the other two hundred dollars is going to the prop firm to incentivize the relationship. That's kind of that mutually symbiotic. That's why they are doing this in the end of the day. It's a win-win in that regard. Two more questions because we're pretty much out of time here. Another one is how long can a trader stay on live sim so they don't have to pay the exchange fees? That is a great question. So it's basically until they meet their profit target for the individual account that they have. So that number can vary, but it's until they meet the profit target for that account. And then it's time to move over to the big boy world. Love it. Guys, this was fantastic. Um, all I can say is that it, it's great to have uh, the two of you on here today. We, I think we help traders in, in a lot of ways, understanding the funding world, the, the, the benefits. Um, I think we even covered, you know, uh, the cons of it as well. We talked about pros and cons because, you know, we're very transparent here on the show. We talked about all of the good things that happened. Uh, and it was just, it was just really, really a lot of fun. And you guys did a great thing. Earn to trade. Thank you so much uh, for giving those away. Uh, and you know, I hope, look forward to building a relationship with you guys. And these traders really loved it. And Morad, you know, thank you again. Obviously, 
Um, you know, we do these shows every month and it, it's always great to see how we're bringing people together in the industry, right? More, you know, I think that I learned a lot today about the funding world that I did not understand, you know, and with your expertise and been doing this for a long time, more, and it's great to see you working with these other firms. Uh, and, I, and I'd love to see more and more new traders go through this process because of all the things that we talked about today. And so I can't thank you both enough uh, for joining me today. Appreciate it. it. It's been a pleasure. And and uh, it, it's been a pleasure to speak with you as well, Morad. So yeah, thank you, you for the uh, the assistance in, in banging out some of these sometimes tricky questions. <laughs> yeah, and traders, remember, everything we discussed today will be in a chart deck. And of course, please like and share the show if you guys enjoyed it. We are not done yet uh, with Earn to Trade and Morad, so we will uh, most likely look for more shows from us uh, uh, in the future because this was just an absolute blast. This will be available. Uh, it's recorded. It will also be available on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, everybody. See ya. Have a great day, everybody. Cheers. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a five-star review on iTunes. Never miss an episode. Go to anthonycrudelli.com and get on our email list for show notifications and for free content that is exclusively for subscribers. Also on anthonycrudelli.com, you will find tons of videos and education on trading futures, options, and crypto. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Opinions expressed are solely my own and my guests, and they do not express the views or opinions of my sponsors. Future's radio show is produced by Crudelli Productions.